through what's making the news this morning is the former Conservative advisor, Claire Pearsall, and the GB News senior political commentator, Nigel Nelson. Good morning to you both. Um, Nigel, you want to start with the story, which I have to say grabbed my attention first thing this morning, right slap bang on the front of the Telegraph. Their leader today is this army, army chief saying that the public face being called up if the UK goes to war. I mean, can we face war on the cheap? Well, this, this is the question. I mean, it's all down to um, the fact that uh, we're, we're reducing the size of the army down to 72,000 uh, troops, that uh, we can't get enough sailors onto our aircraft carriers to send them round the place. And this is the warning from the Chief of the General Staff, General Sir Patrick uh, Sanders, where he says we're kind of facing a 1937 moment, um, that war with Russia is a distinct possibility. It's all rather terrifying stuff, this. Mm. Um, um, but, but because of the size of our armed forces, it means that uh, ordinary people will have to be called up. Mm. I think I'm probably a bit past call-up age now, so I can... Um... You never know. <laughs> you never <laughs> yeah. know. I'll do the Dad's Army at home. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but, I mean, the one question will be, will people actually obey the call? Well, that's fascinating, isn't it? The attitude to duty has shifted so I think much it has, since yeah. the 1930s and, and all of that sort of thing. People, would they risk their lives, um, you know, uh, for king and country. I hope so. <laughs> Otherwise, we're all doomed, aren't we? But, um... We are, but I do, I do think that we really need to pay attention. If you've got one of the chief strategists of the country saying we may need to bring back basically conscription, I think we need to heed that because he's not going to say it lightly. Politicians are not going to want to hear it. And I think it's incredibly important that sometimes they hear these mm. things. It's not an election winner, though, is it? it Vote isn't. for us and we'll conscript <laughs> your sons yeah. and our daughters for yeah. World War Three. But then again, this is about the good of the country. No, I know. But so, yeah, I when would that have anything to... to do with an election? <laughs> no, it doesn't. You know, hence why I'm not a politician. Mm. <laughs> mm. But I think also it raises, Nigel, does it not, um, what on earth the, the government, central UK government, have been doing with the defence budget and uh, why forces are so depleted. And, and basically, I suppose, uh, young people today, naturally enough, don't want to face a life of servitude mm -hmm. and being bossed about and told what to do. Um, as would be the case in the armed forces. Yeah, well, that, well I think that's it. I mean, uh, even uh, even when we had national service, it wasn't hugely popular at the at the time. And I just can't see young people turning around and saying, "Hang on, do I really want to go to war?" And what if they turn around and say, "No"? Does that mean yeah. that we don't join in some kind of future war? I think it obviously depends on what the threat is. I and mean, what the Defence Secretary Grant Shapps would say is, "We've got lots of technology. We don't need quite so many people to work it. Uh, we can fight." wars that way but certainly mm. when you get get somebody like uh, Patrick Sanders who actually understands the, the manpower you need yeah. yes uh, and what would what would this sort of percentage of GDP in defense be under a Labour government traditionally this is a Tory strong point isn't it? It is yeah I mean I think that 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 uh, we're about to sort of Tony Blair days where we're where uh, they're borrowing policies but both of both sides are borrowing policies from each other uh, the idea at the moment is is to uh, do defense spending of two and a half percent they're being calls to, to actually make it three percent yeah, yeah. Um, I think we'll probably stick stick to the two and a half under labor okay okay um, and continuing I suppose with that theme uh, Prince Edward Clare is talking about politics and he's talking about um, uh, I suppose the role men have in current life and, and, and things like uh, conscripting for the army well, that's right this is a really interesting speech uh, given by Prince Edward in South Africa, where he's off on a on a visit, and breaking it down by saying that men really aren't doing a great job. Look at all the conflicts that are going on, and we need to to look at the role of women. And I. I thought this is quite fascinating. His wife is very heavily into gender equality. She is a great spokesperson for women's rights. And he seems to now be echoing that and pushing it forward. And, and I do think there is a point. And I come across as a, a massive feminist, but I, I dislike the fact that women are so discounted mm -hmm. in these kind of conversations. Because I, as we've seen during the pandemic, there were men in the main four roles of the, what they call the quad of COVID decisions within the government and no women. So what happened is uh, childcare was not thought out, anything to do with um, moving children between households if there were divorced families, but also those businesses that predominantly 
employed women and were set up by women in the beauty industry and things like that were never ever considered. So I think that he's right to raise this. It's quite interesting doing it in South Africa where human rights is always a big subject and to look at it from a gender perspective is something very different for them. But I think fair play to him for, for bringing this to the Yeah, and you look at the Women Wage Peace Movement, which is a, uni uh, a union between Israeli and Palestinian mm. women who've come together and said, is enough, is enough, please stop shed, you know, the bloodshed of our children. Um, it is often women that voice that well, opinion. Let's...